So it, it's a tech conference, but we wanted to have a uh, hello, Eman. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? We're you're, we're doing well. Uh, if, I don't know if you can speak a little bit louder or improve the volume. That would be great. Uh, but yeah, so we really wanted to have you because um, uh, we wanted. So we we talk about like how new industries are being opened by design. You know, op opening APIs. You know, by regulation. So yeah, that enable a lot of threats, potential threats. And Alisa showed that in healthcare, you know, if you open in the wild, uh, some people may be interested by what you do. But having you, we, we also wanted to have the opportunity, you know, what's going on, what's next, what we can do about with the data, you know, with more open uh, system and healthcare, but also maybe with the warnings. So this is why we invited you. And we're glad to have you presenting for uh, the next 20 minutes. Are you able to share your slide with us? Yeah, and we don't hear you a lot, so. Oh, can you see it now? Yeah, we can. We can see it. Uh, uh, we can see it. You can go full screen. Okay. And so you will be presenting us digital device and social media's role in health awareness. Of course, the the recent last year situation has been extremely important in that space. This is where we're really glad to have you. Welcome in the PIDS community, and we the stage is yours for. Thank uh, you. Thank so you. thank you for having me, and I would really like to th say thanks to Appy Days and of API Days, and of course uh, Mehdi uh, for giving me this chance. Um, with all these um, um, IT and API gurus, um, being a doctor here, I do feel like a layman. But uh, of course, um, the the use of social media and digital device is uh, is getting more and more um, common in uh, healthcare. So. My name is Dr. Eman Tahid, and I'm a public health expert and a global health worker, and I work with University of Southern California. Um, so the topic of my talk today is um, digital device and social media's role in health awareness. So as we all know that um, telemedicine was already there before the pandemic as well. But due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we saw a skyrocketing uh, increase in the use of telemedicine and digital health, um, including um, interest in pursuing uh, mental health treatment for people um, through telehealth as well. So uh, if we talk about the role of digital health in health awareness, um, there are different types of um, telehealth technologies which are being used. Um, so you can do remote patient monitoring uh, through digital health, you can do video conferencing, you can see your patient, you can do consultations on Zoom and other um, apps that are available. You can also do mobile or smart device um, checkup on your patient, they can just text you and you can just uh, provide consultation on a text or the app you have. And um, uh, it's all HIPAA compliant. So it's not like you are worried about um, the, the breach of security, the data is all secure. Um, and it's all um, because the healthcare was already using the EMS system for the, the, the healthcare data and the patient records. Um, so, uh, so this is still in use and this is going to be used in future as well uh, to get rid of more and more paperwork and the files and getting everything on the database. Um, medication reminders can also be done uh, through digital health devices. So there is a growing global consensus about the role of digital health in healthcare systems, as I just said. Um, so what digital health does is it, it complies um, because of the COVID-19 pandemic. If you see um, what happened was it was helping us comply with the measures of physical distancing and all the, the protocols, social distancing protocols that were uh, that have been um, described by the WHO, um, and it increases the health outcomes as well. Um, there are multiple benefits, which I'm, I'm going to discuss in the next slide. Um, so there are a lot of benefits of digital health and few disadvantages as well. Of course, the benefits do outweigh the disadvantages, but I'm going to discuss here everything so you know whoever is listening, um, they can make their informed decision. Um, so the pros that we have is, of course, it follows the social distancing protocols, it reduces the risk of infection, it helps you not to travel, you can just get your 
get checkup done from your home, from the comfort of your home or wherever you want to be. Um, you can avoid the transit systems. Um, then you have better time management and uh, there is less time spent in the waiting rooms um, of the clinics and the hospitals. Um, and it also helps uh, provision of healthcare to the to the remote areas or where healthcare facilities are not easily available. So you can just uh, provide them consultations from where you are uh, to those remote areas. Um, it provides expanded health outcomes and it causes decreased healthcare costs. Um, so there are some disadvantages I just mentioned. So some of them would be, of course, you do not develop a good patient doctor rapport. Um, there is a lack of personal patient contact. Um, people are actually hesitant um, to share their information on video calls or mobile devices. Um, there is um, a lot of people um, don't have uh, internet and smartphones available easily in remote areas. That's another issue. Um, familiarity, familiarity to the technology uh, is another issue. Like people are not uh, that tech savvy, like people like me. Um, so there's a, a lot of reluctance of telehealth use by the doctors as well because of the reimbursement uh, concerns. Um, there is a lack of confidentiality, like that people think that, you know, it's not safe to discuss it online. Um, and um, limited clinical diagnostic capabilities um, is another um, drawback as well. So, so we already talked about digital health. So if the, the devices, and now if we talk about social media's role in health awareness, um, social media role, uh, social media plays a very, very vital role in health education. Um, so um, at individual level, like if you are just a doctor and you want to aware your patients and your followers, or if you are running an organization, which I'm going to talk about in a bit. Uh, so if you're running an organization who wants to um, who wants to do health education of people, so what they can do is they can use social media um, to connect and communicate with their um, target population. Um, so what they do is. Um, they do health awareness by informing them, by educating them. You can also support them. And uh, it also helps raising the funds as well on social media. So a lot of uh, organizations uh, have been raising funds on uh, social media as well, like online uh, fundraising. Um, so if I talk about health education and awareness um, uh, with COVID-19 pandemic, it did help a lot, like, you know, the educational institution institutions, uh, the hospitals, the doctors, they kept sharing materials to let people know how to um, prevent from the disease and how to keep themselves safe. So it helps in prevention. It also helps let you know to detect your disease, like how to diagnose it, how to treat it, uh, how to take care of a patient or yourself. So uh, it, it helps in many ways. So now I'm going to talk about the organization that we are working for is Tawheed Health. So it's a non nonprofit platform that has been working uh, since uh, March 2019. Uh, but of course, with the COVID-19 pandemic, it started uh, working more. Uh, it became more active, I would say. Um, so it does uh, health awareness about the pressing health issues among the masses and uh, the health care personnel as well. So this organization is run by doctors living in different parts of the world. It operates from Virginia, USA. Um, and uh, what it does is, as I just told you, it does health awareness. It provides health information and educational materials to raise uh, awareness. And it provides them from the verified sources like WHO or CDC um, using the social media and digital messaging applications like WhatsApp and other applications. So how Tawheed Health use social media and digital app for health education is uh, they created online educational materials to health awareness, um, like um, on different diseases, including tuberculosis, um, liver diseases, heart diseases, and of course, including coronavirus. Um, so Tawheed Health uh, uh, also uses a digital app, app or device. They have a 24 hour online um, WhatsApp information service where people contact them regarding their health issues. And uh, we have doctors all over the world who 
if somebody's, for example, reaching you from London, UK. Um, so a doctor present in the same area is going in the same region is going to reply to the that that concerned uh, person uh, to provide them health education. So they educate them about the diseases and how to prevent and treat them uh, via um, um, the social media um, as well, uh, by, like uh, Facebook and YouTube. They create live videos. They share live content so that people can get educated. So the WhatsApp service I was talking about, what we did was we, we conducted a study to see if it is actually actually helping people um, or it's just, you know, we are creating it and we are just replying to people. Um, so we conducted the study. Um, we Around 240 people reached us on that app um, with around 280 questions. Hey, let me see. So 273 inquiries, yeah. Um, so 273 inquiries from March 2020 up till now, and it's still ongoing because the pandemic hasn't stopped yet. So people keep asking us information regarding the pandemic and with the Delta variant and all that, it's still going to be ongoing. Um, so with that phone app, uh, they inquired us questions and questions were multiple questions uh, related to COVID-19, um, their diseases on the GI, liver, uh, and then what we did was we did a follow-up short study as well. What we did was on the same people who asked us questions, we did a survey. We created a survey and asked them the effectiveness of that digital health or telehealth or telemental health, how it helped them. So uh, as I said, we received 273 inquiries. Out of that, 255, around 93.5%, were actually related to the COVID-induced panic anxiety. So uh, people got anxiety, they were worried about um, the, uh, the disease and they didn't know what to do. So in the, out of panic, they were just questioning you, asking you questions about the disease. So we received multiple questions like, you know, I'm feeling these symptoms, what to do? I have fever for past two days, I'm feeling sore throat. Um, should, what treatment should I get? Where should I go? Um, how should I isolate myself? How should I quarantine? Are there any quarantine centers in my region? Where should I be going? Um, when is the vaccine coming? How um, uh, is it safe to get this vaccine or Pfizer or Moderna? Or um, how many cases are in my region? For example, in, in Karachi, Pakistan, I, we received a lot of questions regarding, you know, um, how many cases are there today? People just want to be aware, like how many cases are there and they want to know like where to go for the quarantine centers or hospitals um, and uh, when is the lockdown happening in my city. So stuff like that. And um, uh, so these were the mo main questions that we received. Other questions we did receive regarding their medical conditions uh, um, related to COVID, related to medicine, there were six questions, two related to psychiatry or mental health, two related to the pulmonology, two to the blood systems, um, three to the liver, some pregnancy related um, questions as well, like how is pregnancy related to COVID and also to do the GI system because COVID does impact um, the, the GI system as well. So that was a pie chart if we saw here that 95%, 94% were, were related to panic anxiety. And this is the bar if you say, so it's almost 95% related to panic and anxiety. So on the same patients, we did a survey as well. Uh, we sent them, us. Um, we created a survey online and we sent to the same patients, like people who asked us questions. Um, so we had multiple questions um, there and when people answered 67%, around 67% said uh, that uh, online health resources, whether on social media or on digital devices, are beneficial to alleviate COVID-19 pandemic induced stress and anxiety. 66%, um, around 66% reported to continuing uh, the online health services after the pandemic. And 44.4% uh, um, reported a lack of physical interaction with the doctor as a disadvantage to digital health. And 36.8% um, found comfort in using telemental health via the digital device. 
devices and um, 35.9 percent almost 36 percent um, said that telehealth saves time uh, in the waiting areas they don't have to go and wait there they can just access from the computer right right away to the doctor uh, we also conducted a literature review other than our surveys and our our data collection so that literature review also showed us um, that COVID-19 um, psychosocial helplines, um, they provided psychosocial support to the general population and medical staff. Um, and our nonprofit organization, Tawheed Health, is continuing this phone app, as I just told you, to provide health information uh, to the people. And as we know that the COVID-19 pandemic is still ongoing and our data is continuing. And as we have more data, um, we are going to, um, I'm going to be sharing it with you. Um, we also published uh, some of our studies uh, in the European uh, um, Mental Health uh, Association, the American Psychiatric Association, APA, um, and also the WPA, um, World Psychiatric Association. So we, we have published our stuff. Uh, we have done posters on that, and we are now working on the papers um, until we complete our data. So um, thank you. Um, that is it. That's what I have all. Um, so if you guys have any questions, um, you can let me know. Yes, of course, uh, Eman. So uh, a first question is, uh, uh, let's say, would you think that without, you know, such digital transformation, the COVID-19 crisis would have been uh, more uh, effective or uh, really different than what we had? Uh, yes, of course, COVID-19 pandemic, I would say digital health and telemedicine was already increasing, like people were starting to use it more in hospitals and everywhere in the clinics. But COVID-19 actually accelerated everything by 10 years. So the use of digital devices and um, the online health platforms has increased. Uh, I would say it, it, it pushed um, up 10 years. It came, uh, it came earlier, I would say. But if we didn't have these devices, right? Imagine we had this COVID-19 pandemic in 1980, for example, right? You know, I, I don't know. Of course, it's a, it's a, it's a thought. But uh, what would have been different in terms of uh, communication or, you know, the ability to to be reactive? Of course, people do find ways to communicate. Like in Spanish flu, they created pamphlets distributed to people they get bent door by door you do have ways but of course it's limited with internet with digital devices with social media you can reach like billions of people in just you know in seconds so it it does help um in disseminating information um uh, like a fire i would say uh it, the so digit the digital media in this age it did help a lot had um it was in 1980s of course we would have uh, worse conditions in providing health education to people we still see vaccine uh, uh, reluctance like people are not taking vaccine um, but of course a health educating them via social media and a digital device uh, did help and uh, can i would say convincing a lot of people to get vaccinated yeah, you say disseminating uh, information and so we have some questions coming about fake news or you know about like the ability also to disseminate wrong information so what has been the um, let's say the impact of telemedicine or social media and let's say digital device uh, networks uh, in in the in compensating the uh, the fake news versus the official news well, of course. Uh, so for that, what we suggest is all the doctors and uh, the, the, the popular organizations that you stay to the verified sources, which is the CDC and WHO. So collecting information from anywhere in the world, like, you know, uh, it's just going to harm you because people are suggesting to take laxatives to prevent COVID. So information like this is not going to help anyone. It's just going to create a chaos and not treat you and not take you anywhere. Uh, so uh, it's very important to follow the verified sources, I would say. And that's what um, the organization I mentioned is. They are also using information from CDC and WHO only. 
But, you know, with digital devices, application, um, you know, we are all resyndicating these resources. Not everybody is able to understand the complexity of these source of information, even if they do a great work trying to explain actually what's going on. So, um, yeah, are the, these digital devices and application uh, um, like doing a, a good work, a good enough work into the, uh, uh, the dissemination of the, of the official sources? They are trying their best. Of course, uh, we are also learning how to control the fake news and how to spread the right one, how to, um, I would say, smartly use uh, the digital devices. So um, it's still a learning process. And uh, I would say it would take time uh, to, uh, to uh, I would say, educate people in the right way. Uh, we have some question about the tracking. What do you think about like the fact that you know, thanks to smartphones and digital devices, we have been to able to generate QR codes, making applications to know if you were contam contaminating others and everything. But at some point, some people are afraid that it's used for tracking. And you know, so what do you think about like the the digital education that we need to put in place for people to know exactly what how their data is used and for what purpose? Yeah, you need to um, you need to actually uh, provide them this reassurance that you're not going to use their information and data. That can happen anywhere, not just with these information services, health information services, or something like that. That can even happen in the hospital. Like you're you you can have a breach in the patient records, and the whole EMS system can you know can be um, uh, tracked. So uh, you have to ensure that you are HIPAA compliant and you're not going to use the patient information in any way. Of course, accidents can happen. Of course, there can be hacking. Some can, someone can hack your stuff. But from your end, you should ensure that the people and the patients especially, that you are going to keep everything confidential as much as in your capacity. So we have some questions about the uh, uh, USA, but also the rest of the world, uh, in a sense that uh, did you see any difference into, let's say, at least the COVID information or dissemination based on, let's say, the, uh, the, the percentage of people who had a smartphone in the country? Did you see or do you expect a, a difference? Not really. Um, I would say... Um, uh people um, everywhere, they are different type of people. Like in some region, people are reluctant just because they are politically inclined to one person and he, they are telling them that vaccine is not good, for example. In some region, they have religious reasons. If I would talk about Pakistan, they, they would say that vaccine can harm their religion. So it's, it's a lot of, uh, you know, pers I would say preconceived notions they have, their personal beliefs. Of course, use of a digital device, as you said, it does facilitate in educating them more. If they are in a remote area in India or Pakistan where I cannot reach them, they don't have a smartphone, of course, how would I educate them? I have to reach somewhere, I have to go on by my foot, I have to go there, I have to travel to educate them. So of course, uh, having a digital device or smartphone in an area, in, a, in an urban area where they are, it's easier to access them and provide them health education, I would say. Did the COVID-19 crisis and the digital uh, uh, devices uh, also showed that a lot of people don't trust governments anymore or don't trust their smartphone provider or the application? Like we see a lot of uh, revolt uh, from, from many users about, you know, the tech in, in general. Uh, did, you, did you experience that in your surveys, in, in your psychological uh, you know, aspect surveys? Yes, we did. Yeah, we people are still reluctant um, because of their religious or political beliefs. Um, and they just, it's hard to tackle it. I would say we are still, as I'm also still learning the use of digital device and to, to, to you know, I would say how to um, decrease or how to eliminate these kind of notions in their head or, um, so there is a barrier I'm having um, and, uh, um, Hopefully, hopefully with time, we would be having a, um, better, I would say, provide smartphones to more people, provide internet to more people, so it's easier to educate them and um, involve more community leaders who they actually trust. So if you involve the community leaders and educate them with, and, and, and you know, you, you join them, join with them, like make a team with them, it's easier to convey messages and to make them believe what you want to teach them. 
Yeah, I think it was in 2014, uh, no, 2016, uh, president, former President Barack Obama went, uh, had a discussion with Silicon Valley uh, um, uh, tech leaders, and he was explaining to them that, yes, U.S. government is not a startup. U.S. government actually has to um, make all the U.S. citizens beneficiary of the same rights. And so you can't solve everything with an app or a widget or uh, or something like that because I think if I quote him, it was uh, uh, yes you have to you have to to deliver the same service to any grandmother in Alabama, uh, right? So does you know the 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 digital devices, the telemedicine uh, creates a barrier between people who are let's say uh, a tech savvy or tech educated and the people who are not. Of course, yeah, definitely. If uh, if I have my grandma use. Uh um health consultation or you know her appointment with the doctor she would if i'm not there she would have problems logging in uh, her screen would sh uh, close or some internet issue will happen um and she would not be comfortable using it i'm i mean you have to you have to teach them you have to go on their level to teach them this the use of these smart devices and the computer because that is also important um that is one of the barriers we have in patient patients completely using uh, from from in-person consultations moving to these online consultations this is one of the very big barriers we have because they are not familiar with the technology so maybe a controversial question here uh, is it really the to the person old person or you know the uh, the person um, uh, who, who who can't let's say be literate with the, with tech to adapt or is it to the tech to adapt to the literacy or the ability of people to uh, to use applications. Yeah, I would say tech. Um, you cannot change or teach each and every individual in this world. You can try your best to provide simplest of the things so they can learn easily. So I would say tech should also try to. I I would say try to go down to their level not go down to their level, but somewhere in the middle, meet them somewhere in the middle. So it's easier for them to use as well. And it's, it's, it should be, you know, we should be involving uh, government in this as well to educate people in the use of these devices. So we have a question about telemedicine. Uh, do you think telemedicine is here to stay and what percentage of the market it can take? Oh yes, this is going to stay. Uh, what percentage I cannot say um, exactly because uh, it depends. I don't know, in some parts of the world, they are still not accepting it. Um, in US, of course, in UK, mm, telemedicine is, it's, it's, the, it's the future, I would say. It, this, is, this is what we have, even in um, currently where I am in the hospital, um, they are all changing to online systems. Everything is changing to telemedicine uh, from psychiatric uh, evaluations um, to the proper like medical examinations they are doing everything online it's of course there are some barriers you cannot completely examine the patient but you can have them do stuff online um so definitely telemedicine is here to stay but i cannot exactly give you a number because it's different in different parts of the world so at api days you know we we, we help people to understand how we can build software to build new generation of application and redistribute uh, existing services uh, across the network, but for healthcare, and and I, and I would ask the doctor uh, now: Does telemedicine actually is the same level of service? Not touching the patient, not looking at it at him or her, like you know this relationship. The, can it really scale for all diagnostics? Well, um, it it is so far it's working really well. Like I see examinations being done online. I see everything, prescriptions being done online. Uh, patients, uh, a lot of people are not actually, they have a, a, a white, I would say it's a white collar. They they get anxious when see, they, see, they see the doctor. So they, they like to be on the screen, behind the screen. It's easier for them to talk. For example, in psychiatry and mental health, um, they are finding it easier to talk to the doctor in front of them, um, which is behind the screen. Um, so it depends uh, person to person and their likes. Um, uh, people are adapting. If you keep educating people about the use of smartphones and devices and try to make easier and better applications, I would say people will adapt more because people do. I have seen a lot of interest according to my study, what I have done and the work I have done so far. 
there is a lot of interest in telepsychiatry and telemedicine in general and people do want to um it's just easier everything is easier schooling is so easier now because everything is online you don't have to go and travel it saves time in traveling right so if you have if you are less scared by the smartphone than the doctor <laughs> you can use a, a telemedicine yeah. um yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, no that's that's really uh that's and really uh, more scared by the infection of course i'm going to go and contract the covid-19 infection in the bus or maybe in the hospital waiting area so of course it's going to save you in that way as well yeah on the personal level i'm waiting for telemedicine for dentists but uh, it will it probably won't occur <laughs> really soon but uh, yeah thank you very but much they are also, they are also uh, considering and moving to it as well as much as they can so everyone is trying to incorporate telemedicine as much as they can yeah thank you very much for that feedback if you want to know more about your study and what you do where we can go uh you can contact me um on my email amantohid@gmail.com and uh, you can also um follow tohid health um that also can help you uh, inform tohid health is on facebook youtube twitter instagram they also have a website tohidhealth.org and um yeah i can leave my telephone number as well to you Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Ayman, and uh, thank you for having there with us to explain actually the challenge uh, and the opportunity and challenge of uh, you know the digitalization of healthcare uh, after post post COVID nineteen. Thank you, and so we are at the break now.